Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, bettingangle.us. You know, I just watched, and I mean just, watched the Canelo Golovkin rematch <clears throat> in Northern California. Northern California definitely in the house. Uh, at a Hooters in Campbell, California. Right? Just wanted to leave kind of like a video diary. My initial thoughts on this decision. Right? First, let me admit I'm biased. Right? I was expecting Golovkin to win the fight by stoppage. Right? My primary bet was the under 11 and a half rounds at uh, plus 170 and plus 180. Well, let me just say this. Um, <clears throat> even with that bias, let me just ask a simple question, and I haven't been online reading anyone's comments on this fight. When did they stop counting jabs in boxing? Is this something new? I feel like I just watched the Larry Holmes fight where the judges decided not to count the jabs. Folks, uh, an effective jab is a beautiful thing. Golovkin had the jab working tonight. Right? The jab, quite frankly, gave Golovkin several rounds in real life. Just not on the judges' scorecards. I, I don't even understand it. Understand on my scorecard, I had Golovkin winning by at least three rounds. And that's being charitable. I saw the fight with a friend. He had Golovkin winning by three rounds. And he was rooting for Canelo. Right? Understand, Golovkin matches Canelo with the haymakers. Golovkin lands several big punches. Both guys are landing big punches. Both guys. I'll concede, I was shocked Canelo took Golovkin shots. Right? Now, if you have a standoff on the big punches, there, there's no... <laughs> There's absolutely no equality <clears throat> on the jabs and on the boxing. I haven't looked at the CompuBox numbers yet. I'm guessing that Golovkin had a wide, and I mean wide, gap in his favor on the jabs. Not only that, the fight's 12-round fight. In at least seven of the rounds, at least seven, Canelo, who is in the pocket, he's throwing big shots. There's no question about that. But understand, as he throws big shots, Canelo doesn't have ring coverage, at least not in this fight. So Golovkin takes a step back. And then at least seven of the rounds, Canelo throws haymakers that miss Golovkin entirely. In other words, these wide hook shots where all he gets is air. In other words, Canelo's badly out jabbed. Golovkin has Canelo missing for most of the night. And they both land power shots. Golovkin looks to be more active than Canelo. So how do the judges come up with this scorecard? It's, it's utterly ridiculous to me. Understand, too, Canelo's even cut. Right? He's, he's cut. So there he is in the pocket, swinging and missing at times. He does do a lot better than I thought he would. As I said, I, I thought he was going to get knocked out. Right? He does come 
to trade blows with Glovkin. As crazy as that is. But folks, deciding to come and trade blows with your opponent, is, is that enough to win the fight? When you're hit with several jabs, when you're swinging and missing, and when the other guy is matching you in power shots. So I don't get it. For me, right now, the world is upside down. I'm going to have to track down a copy of this fight film, right? I saw it live, right? But I'm going to have to track down a copy of this fight film because what I saw live couldn't be what I think it was. Understand, 70% of the people at the beginning of the fight at the Hooters in Campbell, great spot, they were for Canelo. Right? So early in the fight, Canelo, it is breathtaking. He's not running like the first fight. Right? So people are going crazy. But you understood. You understood that Canelo had more fans in the crowd. When they announced this decision, right? I'm telling you a third of the people at the place, not 70%, a third of the people at the place, cheered. Everyone else just sat in their seat baffled. One of the bartenders came over to my side of the bar and shook his head. He, me, and the guys watching the fight with, we were just all looking at each other. It was that ridiculous. Right now, now somebody explained to me too. I mean, I'm completely at a loss on this. How Canelo is the challenger for Golovkin's belts and how Golovkin jabs the pants off of him makes him miss, quite frankly, look like he had more energy, in my opinion, look like he was the better boxer. How is it that Canelo, in fight after fight, seems to be getting the benefit of the doubt from judges even when he's not even the belt holder entering the ring. <laughs> I'm amazed. Let me say too, Harold Letterman's scorecard on HBO, he had Golovkin winning by three or four rounds, right? I thought Letterman was being conservative. Right? I was conservative in my own views, right? I'd see a round, I'd say, you know, that round could be, you know, that round could be a Canelo round and stuff like that. And I still had Golovkin winning by three rounds. So this, this fight really, and I'm sore, I'm a defeated gambler, both sides of my hedge, up in smoke, right? Full disclosure, up in smoke. But man, I, this is one of the worst decisions I've come across. I thought it was clear in the 12th round Canelo knew he needed a stoppage. I thought it was clear in the 12th round Canelo knew he needed the round. And that 12th round starts off with Golovkin dominating. Even the 12th round, Canelo has problems, and of course, Golovkin is a master at using distance, timing, a jab. In other words, Golovkin pops a few jabs, Canelo lunges in with some huge shot, Golovkin takes a step back. The punch passes by his face. In my heyday, 1980s, we call that boxing. We call that a champ defending his title, right? Today, looks to me like the rules have changed. Today, that's considered a loss. In the comment section to this video, give me your initial thoughts on this decision. If you want to call me bitter, I plead guilty. Yeah, I'm bitter. I have no problem losing bets. 
right? If I saw Canelo come out and destroy my guy, I would have said, well, there's the champ. He beat my guy. I was wrong on this. Let me go lick my wounds. But nothing gets my goat more than seeing a champ who is one of the best middleweights in history lose an unbeaten streak, first on a questionable draw, and then lose his unbeaten record in a fight in which he's popping a jab and matching the other guy in power shots and making the other guy lunge and miss where HBO's own score has the champ up by three or four rounds, right? This doesn't sit well with me. I view this as a robbery, right? Golovkin didn't even stick around to talk with HBO. He knew he had been robbed, right, on national television. This is a complete farce. Canelo, look, I have the utmost respect for a guy who fights Mayweather, then fights Golovkin twice, and of course, along the way, is fighting Cotto, is fighting Arislandi Lara, has fought Austin Trout. Look, I give Canelo credit on his bravery in taking tough fights. But unless they've decided not to count jabs, he didn't win this one, folks. This wasn't a photo finish, right? I'm puzzled. I, I don't get it. There's some dynamic out there where Canelo stays in the pocket, exceeds expectations, doesn't run. And somehow we're equating that with him doing better than a guy who's popping him in the face with jabs is hitting him with brick shots. In other words, let's be charitable here. Golovkin at least matches Canelo in terms of power punches. You don't see Golovkin lunging and missing as often as Canelo lunges and misses. You certainly don't see Golovkin eating the jabs Canelo eats. And somehow, they then decide that that's enough to award Canelo the title? That's absurd, right? I view this as a robbery. You tell me how you view this in the comment section of this video, right? Am I full of hot air? Wouldn't be the first time, right? Am I just a bias defeated better? Or did you just see an unbeaten champ have his unbeaten streak taken in a fight that, quite frankly, he won by at least three rounds. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.